there's obviously the offense has struggled the last couple of weeks. Speed, blocking, anything for him to ask me to do, I can do that. So, new haircut, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much, really. Just got tired of my hair. Coach Rabel had mentioned uh, with the hip, they want to make sure that's good, but also with everything that you're asked to do, you know, try to avoid overcompensating. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you with that hip? You know, how do you feel being able to I feel good. Um, just hanging in there. It didn't get sore or nothing, so I'm just staying on top of it, taking care of it, really, so it don't come back and hurt me. What were some of the things you did while you were you know, on the IR? Mm -hmm. like, how did you get back from the field? The way you run, like, it's violent. So, like, how do you go about still running that way but not, you know, reactivating that hip? <laughs> took a two. I mean, I had to, it was a long process. <laughs> I just had to stick with it, man, but I'm, I'm all good, huh? Is that something that you've experienced before? Uh, yeah, and that's something that you know you really appreciate coming, especially from like the top down, especially like from the head coach. You know, the guys involved, the guys show that it, it really means something to them, and it makes you even play harder for your coaches and stuff like that. I mean, you look at like there's a lot of guys who came in late like yourself, but you just like have a way of just like getting ingratiated right into the program quickly. You know, is there something that you've sensed? that would allow you to do that as well? I mean, I, I'm like, I can't help but be myself in right. every aspect and situation that I go through. So it's been cool to feel like very much so accepted by like the team and the guys in the room. Appreciate you. No problem. In terms of, I guess, just getting here late and all, what, what, what are the things that you try to do just to make sure to catch yourself up? Um, well, I took some extra time my first couple of days here to sit with me with the coaches and uh, get make sure I learned uh, the playbook to get it in real quick because uh, I got to I gotta play this week. You know, first weekend, I'll be on the field. To make sure I took the time to make sure I knew the checks and things that I need to be, be prepared for the game, you know, so I can go out there and do my job for my teammates. In terms of that, I guess, you know, Making sure that you don't get caught in a wrong position or miss a call or something is probably the most important thing because that can lead to a big play. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, um, just being on top of being a pro, just knowing your job, knowing what you got to do, and being reliable for the guy next to you, you know, because that's really all it's about because you, you trust that he's going to do his job and he trusts that you're going to do it, yours. Obviously, running game not, not going as well in general as you guys would like for the last few weeks. What what can Derek, like it, it's not Derek, it's not the line, you know, it's a communal thing, but what can Derek do a little better himself to be part of this solution, you think? Stay consistent and keep, keep being in the right place, um, pressing the holes he's supposed to uh, press, and then when he get opportunities, win when he gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Uh, but, you know, other than that, I think, you know, whenever you go through a tough time in football, I've learned through the years uh, of my coaching years is you, Stay to the fundamentals and technique. You stick to the fundamentals, technique. Uh, you don't have knee-jerk reactions, and you keep playing. You keep plugging along, and you try to be consistent. And it eventually turns. And if you gotta make some quarter turns schematically or something like that, then you do. But there's, you know, there's no need for a knee-jerk reaction. We, we've had success running the ball uh, this season, so. We'll get back. It, it, we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep trying, and, and eventually it'll it'll pop and it'll work just the way it's always kind of done. I was going to ask you also, Titans had a stat today. You know, the, it was about four years ago, Derek had that the monster game against Jacksonville, 240 yards or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you maybe what uh, your recollection was from that game, and also how important was that game for Derek's career? You can almost look at his numbers. There was like pre that game and then after that game in terms of yeah, if you remember correctly, if I remember correctly, I should say, Dion actually started the game. Dion was the starter, and Derek actually went in because we were backed up. So it was still early in the game, if I remember correctly, and Dion started. Dion had an explosive screen the first series, and then they punted, and we were backed up on the one yard line. So it was like, okay, Derek's the bigger guy. Let him go pound it, and then he took off. And then he went in the next series, I think, and he took off on another run. And it was the kind of the rest is history. And then um, they tell you what kind of guy he is. We got toward the end of the game, and I think he had four touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. And we were down in the goal line area, 
and he asked Braves to put Dion in to let Dion score. And Dion, we ran the ball three or four straight times, and it didn't work. But you know, the, the stadium was screaming Henry, and he 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 didn't want he wanted Dion to score. So that tells you a little bit about who he is, you know. And and from that point on, it's kind of taken off. And again. A lot of credit goes to the offensive line, the tight end, and there's been a lot of guys through in the past few years, and and both the old line, the tight ends, and whenever there are long runs, there's always receivers down the field blocking, and you know Corey certainly did a great job, and um, if I remember correctly, John New actually on that play towards ACL um, was done for the season, so the next group of guys that aren't got ready to play was also, you know what I mean? So it's just a collective group and. That again is a situation where, to me, Derek was—he was running, become more consistent. He was in the right place, and then these things happened, and it took because no one saw that coming. I wish I could tell you I was coaching for him to run for 200 yards, but you know what I mean. It just—he kept working because, as you know, I mean, it got to a point earlier that season, we made a change and started starting Dion. I was here in 18 when we first got here, something we use, and it's, you know, to simulate tipping balls at the line of scrimmage and created a habit. And obviously when we do, good things happen. And um, I think the indie game was a great example of that when Tart picked off the ball after tipping it to himself. And um, so it's just trying something we try to simulate, but we use kick balls so that way it doesn't hurt our guys' fingers or whatever it may be. And then even, you know, looking like today you guys were working on And I, I saw, like, you stopped the drill and you had them restart to seem like, like to, to get used to coming out of the huddle with energy and getting on the ball and go. I, I, that's what I thought it was. But anyway, just working on get off itself. Like, yep. How do you kind of go through and find drills that, that help that? Yeah, the first thing that I do is I just look at the game. You know, I watch the game and try to think about how what they do in the game, what we can do in practice or in a drill to simulate that and try to help them. And you always start with the foundation and the fundamentals. And obviously when you game plan for a team, those might get more specific. But in terms of them coming out today and me making them restart, it's because they didn't come out with enough urgency. Yeah. You know, we do get offs. That's, that's simulating third down. It's a big time deal for us. So take it pretty serious. Yeah, I mean, uh, Braves are going to be really good. In general, we got to be more consistent up front and, you know, um, you know, give a lot of credit to the Eagles. They played really well and we didn't play our best game. And uh, for Dennis, it's still about just staying those basic fundamentals and pass pro and staying inside out and using some length and all those types of things. Um, but, you know, we all have a responsibility in that for sure. What, uh, what, what's been your take on, on the Raven, you know, and in terms of how is he making strides? Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm excited um, to kind of see, you know, the Raven and, and um, you know, see what he can do. He's doing a good job. He's gotten better. He's, he's you know, of course, bought into what we do and how we do things. So, um, you know, we'll just we'll kind of see where it takes him. He's a, he's a big and strong guy. So uh, I know you guys have been very hard, you know, but but with all the issues that have been going on online, I mean, has there been any any thought of, you know, is that an, at, at all an option? Uh, you yeah, know? I mean, I, I think you just you know we're always trying to find the best five, and um, you know, and and starting with Raves and. You know, we're always there's always conversations and stuff like that. But we believe in the guys who we have out there, and we believe in Dylan too. He's he's served so many roles for us. You know, he's he's um, I mean, he's been all over the place for us over the last two years. So, you know.